Hi everyone, Andy Klein here. Welcome to my shop. About a year ago, Charlie Kosorek and I showed you this vise that has what we believe to be all of the good properties of a chain coupled twin screw vise, but none of the bad. And this is version 2. A lot better, still not quite ready for mass consumption, but good enough to give you an update. So as a refresher, this vise is awesome because it's fast travel. It opens quickly, closes quickly, which means that you can very quickly go from clamping something thin to something thick good holding power even though we don't have leather on it yet and we fixed some of the problems with the old vise the old vise had a self-aligning front bearing so this was flopping all around it's a lot more rigid now so this is really close just a couple issues yet you notice there's just a little bit of bounce to the jaw really not too bad probably acceptable but i think we can improve on it uh, and a couple other things so let's flip it upside down show you what's going on with this thing and explain what we're thinking we're going to change for the third and final version so this is the guts when you turn the hand wheel it pulls this back plate forward which in turn pushes this rod that's attached to the cam and you get that fast travel you tighten down the rod first flip the cam, all the rack is transferred into the back plate, all that stays the same. And we have a single rod for alignment so that when you tighten the cam down, you don't put all the torque on, on this nut, which wouldn't be good. So what's imperfect about this? Well, having just one rod, that gives you a pivot point. That's why the front jaw can bounce a little bit more than I'd like it to. So I think the next version is going to have two rods. And the other thing, we have a lot of wasted material here. This is, this is the point where all the torque is, is happening. This is just a single point of attachment. And in fact, I only have this rod about three quarters of an inch in right here, because actually having this, this rod able to pivot around this point, uh, it doesn't hurt anything and, and actually helps with alignment. This is gonna be something that a woodworker puts together. It's not gonna have machine shop precision. So a little bit of, of play in here actually helps. So everything above this line is really wasted material. Um, and anytime that you can reduce costs and reduce material uh, and keep performance the same or improve performance, that's just something that you should do. So the next version is gonna have some kind of tapering here, single point of attachment, probably two rods and single points of contact for those two rods because I don't need this rod and this sleeve to keep the plate parallel. That's already happening over here. I just need to keep it from moving this way or that way. And a single point of contact is fine for that. So here's what we're thinking for the final design. So you notice right away that this vise is expandable. Uh, it can be set up for different distances between the two rods from about 22 inches to 14 inches uh, and still have two bars to track and, and not bounce in each one of those, those setups. And the material of construction for the back plate is a tube steel piece cut diagonally to save material and a U-channel. And these are, these are common forms but very strong forms, so they'll bo be both strong and, and affordable. We're also thinking that we're going to get rid of the pillow block bearing, or the flange bearing rather, on the front and just use two bushings that are embedded in the front jaw of the vise. Uh, this should be as effective or even more effective at keeping that vice jaw parallel and be more cost effective. So after we design and build the next prototype, prove that it works, get some manufacturing quotes, the plan is to launch a Kickstarter. Now I'm thinking two to three months for that to happen, but I tend to always be overly optimistic on how fast this stuff's going to happen. So maybe longer, we'll do it as fast as we can. Uh, now I'm literally going to cannibalize this version 2 to build version 3. Uh, and a lot of that work has to happen this weekend. So I'm going to get to it. Bye for now. So I'm headed to Euclid Machine Shop in Denver. 
uh, to get some free machining done. It's a couple of guys, their own machine shop they started up and they're trying to drum up business so I'll let you swing by on a Sunday and get some machining done for free which is awesome. Really excited to meet these guys, maybe get some insights on design and uh, at the very least uh, get some machining done specifically on the, the threaded rod. So here I go. Alright, so I think I'm here. There, I see it. Euclid Machine and Design. I need to figure out where to park. That's cool. So here's the shop. So how long have you guys been doing this? Uh, sort of two years. Two years. Um, we moved here in June. Gotcha. Cool. So you decided no, no corporate gig, you're going to do your own thing, is that the idea? I worked for the oil industry for a while, and then okay. Alex worked on his family farm. Technically, so we're going to turn down the threaded rod here. Yeah. So you got it in a collet. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put the chuck back on though, because it won't. It should have a one inch through bore, but it's not wanting to. Not a whole lot of clearance in there. I think like there's probably some spurs around where the holes are drilled. If you just kind of file okay. them down, it might fit. Do you want to take the collet out and? So we found that the turn down section of shaft where the hand wheel was mounted actually was quite a bit off center by almost like a 32nd of an inch. Uh, and that could have been causing some of that bouncing that I mentioned before. Uh, and that would have been made worse by the fact that we only had the one rod. Uh, so we're just going to cut that off and start from scratch. Uh, so the next prototype won't open quite as far as I wanted it to, but that's okay for demonstrating the, the final proof of concept. Uh, it's better than buying another threaded rod. They're expensive. So the little shims to keep from damaging the threads? Yeah. This stuff isn't hardened or anything, is it? So I don't need any oil or cutting fluid or anything? I mean, you can run faster with it, okay. but a lot of times it makes more mess than it's worth. And typically we'd run, for a lot of cutting, you'd run carbide. Okay. But carbide doesn't like the intermittent cut. It's real brittle. So the reason we're turning down so much of this rod is so that when you open the vise only a couple inches, you don't have threads exposed. So if you drop a workpiece down on its edge, it's going to be hitting smooth shaft on both the left and the right sides. Um, so I thought that'd be a nice feature, a really easy thing to do. Uh, and the final version, we can actually just use 5 8 inch rod, drill a hole in a smaller section of threaded rod. So it's better performance and it keeps the price down because I don't have to buy so much expensive threaded rod. Probably gonna be a little sealed yet. <laughs> 